Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here for our Team Prosperity Wednesday meeting. Today is December 12th, 2018, and it's just such an exciting time to really get things going, and things are moving very quickly, and it's a great time to build your business. So I appreciate everybody taking the time to be on the call with us today, as well as the people that are taking their time to listen to the recording. I know how valuable your time is, so thank you. Um, there's no need to turn on the camera, so whoever's doing video, they can go ahead and um, turn that off. I just went ahead and stopped all video. Um, all you need is just to be able to see the computer and hear my voice, and I'm very excited that Mike has put together a great presentation. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And what I did was I put together um, a little presentation with a few things that have come up throughout the week. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, now, I do want to tell you that I was the guest speaker for the company um, Saturday. So if you missed my training, I did a training on LinkedIn um, using the mobile phone and the mobile app. So if you uh, missed it, check it out. And, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. And, again, you know, today's 12-12 a very exciting time. Definitely, you know, lucky numbers. Um, what I wanted to talk to you today about is posting across the social media networks. So if you're looking for posts and articles and videos and memes that have a lot of comments or that they say that they're trending, then if you like or comment or share that, it's going to get a lot more attention than something that's not trending. Um, the other thing, um, thanks to Diana Barella, she was telling me that if you're sharing a post, if you do the at with their name right behind it, it'll tag them. So that goes pretty much across all the social media platforms. Some you have to be connected with, some you don't. Um, but, yeah, if you want to tag somebody, do the at in their name. Um, and I've gotten a lot of attention that way also, you know, sharing influencer stuff. A lot of people have been wanting to connect with me and looking at my profile. Now, you can follow influencers. Sometimes they can't follow you or they won't follow you back. That's okay. If they're bringing you value, follow them so you can like, comment, reshare their stuff and get more attention. So, for example, if you comment on something that has 100 comments already, you know, they're going to get something saying that so-and-so commented on the conversation that, you've commented on. So all of a sudden you're popping up in people's feed and then they're wanting to follow you, connect with you, and you're building your network organically that way. Um, now on LinkedIn you can only follow 30,000 people back. So make sure you're filling up your network with the right people. It's okay not to accept uh, every connection request. So don't feel like just because somebody sent you something you have to accept. That's why you're going to have more followers than you're following people most of the time because you're not accepting every single request. The ones that I don't accept are going to be the ones that, you know, in the countries that we don't work. I try not to accept any outside of U.S. posts unless they're influencers that are posting a lot of, you know, really good relevant information. Um, so you can have as many followers as you want, but you can only follow 30,000 people on LinkedIn. Um, and 30,000 seems like a lot. But if you're going to be doing, you know, 30 connections a day and you're picking up 1,000 followers a month, in 30 months you're going to hit that 30,000. So be selective on who you connect with. Um, and that's, that also will go for, like, the connections that they're offering you. So if you're connecting with a certain kind of person, they're going to send you more reminders to connect with similar people. So keep building your network full of good people like yourself. Another thing that I've been doing recently that I feel like has helped me a lot is on LinkedIn, you're going to get announcements um, with, you know, people's anniversaries, new positions, et cetera. So if they've had a work anniversary, I press the little congratulations and then I add my Anywhere link with the two videos. I've been choosing that one more and more because it looks really nice on a mobile device. You know, maybe they're tired of their job or maybe they already don't work there but they haven't updated their LinkedIn. That happens a lot. So I've been getting a lot of traction that way. People go through my link and add their information so I can capture it, put them in my CRM. Now, if they're starting a new position or a new job or they just received a promotion, 
um, under their congratulations, I'll add my product link for Living Benefits. So since they just started something brand new like that day, they're excited about it. They're probably not going to be looking at something brand new that day, but everybody needs Living Benefits if they can qualify for them. So um, since I've started doing this, I'm opening up conversations about Living Benefits, and a lot of people will be like, hey, that was a great video, and I'll respond, great, you know, let me know if you want some information or an illustration and try to open up a conversation about what do they have in place and see if we can't, you know, get that to go somewhere as well. So just a few little tips that have helped me throughout the week, as well as um, I showed this on last Wednesday, I've added my Twitter, my Instagram, and my business Facebook, um, and I have a lot of people that are following me on these other platforms that are coming from LinkedIn. So I like that a lot. I feel like that's brought value. And again, if you're writing business and you haven't done your 2018 AML yet, it's due at the end of the year. So you can also check your licensing and appointments reports to see when your anti-money laundering expires. But if you want to do ours, you can go through my WFG menu, licensing and appointments, licensing, AML course, Kaplan, you have to do the one for CE credits, and it's got to be a minimum of one CE unit, and it has to come from an educational source. So no carriers, an educational source like WebFX, uh, ExamFX, uh, WebCE, uh, Kaplan, there's a bunch. We do the one through Kaplan. It's $9.95, and they report it to your state, um, and it would count towards your license renewals. So those are all the announcements that I had. I'm very excited to bring up Mike. Give me just one second to grab him, and I can't wait to see his presentation. Thanks, everybody. All right, you guys. It is December the 12th, so we've got a few more weeks left in this year, and then we're going to hit you know, Q1 2019 really hard. If you do not find the success in 2019 that you're looking for, you know, if this time next year you're looking back, probably has a lot to do with, you know, some things that are going on from your side, organization, time management, um, grit, perseverance. These are the type of things that anything in life that's worthwhile, that's what you call an in success, it's got to be, there's got to be work in between. You don't just get it thrown on. And that's why we always lead with, you know, the Statue of Liberty. We have, you know, freedom here, financial freedom, lifestyle freedom, time freedom. This stuff, you know, the lifestyle freedom, the time freedom, you get to go where you want, do what you want while you're building this business. As soon as you plug in the financial freedom uh, piece of this puzzle, you know, you have a standard of living and a lifestyle that not many in this country will ever experience. But you're not just going to get there overnight, and you're definitely not going to get there at all unless you start putting the pieces into place that allow you to pave out a road or, um, you know, an avenue to get you where you want to go. One of the things that you guys can do, we're not in offices. Um, that's a great thing. We're not having eight meetings a day, which is nice, but we need to stay connected. One of the best ways that we stay connected is through our Facebook group. So as you bring people in, um, you can invite them to the Facebook group, but, but check on them. Make sure they're getting in. If they don't have a Facebook page, they're going to build one. Once they get it built, we can get them to our Facebook group. But this is a great way to get to know your partners. Um, you know, like we talk about, ask questions, get them answered, share relevant material, uh, push each other towards common goals, and then recognize the people that are actually making it happen. So our Facebook group is definitely something that you want to make sure that your new partners are getting in so they feel a little bit of a, a connection to us, our group, our team. Uh, it works out well. And then don't forget, lately, you know, we have a special needs child. It's the middle of winter. Alana and I haven't had really much to post with this hashtag. Um, but this virtual financial life is things that you're doing. You're experiencing life. You're going out, shows, concerts, uh, with people. Um, you know, this brings the human element to our business build out. This is good on Instagram, Twitter, um, sometimes Facebook. You know, LinkedIn is not something where you really share personal stuff. So the hashtag virtual financial life is good for a branding purpose for us as a whole and also you as an individual as well. We talk about things that you have to have. 
done and you have to have mastered pretty quickly. Uh, if you come into this business in the first little bit of time, you need to do two things. You need to know how to do a screen share. I prefer freeconferencecall.com. It's got a lot of features. Um, it works well. I've had zero glitches with it. It's a nice service. Um, outside of free conference call, there's go to meeting, join me, use whatever you want to use, but make sure you know how to use it because if you're representing yourself as a technology company, you can't even have command over simple technology. It's going to become problematic when you are, you know, interviewing people, talking to clients, training business partners. So free conference call or screen sharing, whatever you want to use, practice if you need with somebody else, make sure you have this mastered. Another thing is the three-way call. Don't get on a telephone call and botch a three-way call four or five times. It does not look good. Once again, you've got plenty of people in this team. It's not hard technology to master. Call somebody up and say, hey, will you spend a minute with me on a three-way call just to practice? Anybody in an organization is going to say yes. Q1 2019. This is going to be an explosive time if you guys play your cards right. Now, Q1 2019 can go by, you know, just like any other quarter, um, and you can get, you know, little to nothing done. But we have some things that can help you. We've got the start of the 12-week year, early January. Um, we've got the Q1 points multiplier that I'll go through. And you've got a basketball tournament. We do some different tournaments, different times, just to give you guys a break from the monotony of building this out. We're still doing the same thing, bring a little competition to it, um, you know, bring a little bit of entertainment to it, and it makes the, the grind or the build out a little bit, you know, more easy to manage. Uh, you know, it's, it's, so that's all we're trying to do is just, you know, bring, you know, some type of a, a, a light kind of approach to what we're doing every single day. 12-week year. I've said this before. If you are brand new, we're looking for those. If you've never done the 12-week year, we're looking for those that start this to see it through to the end, good, bad, or ugly. doesn't matter. If you stay with it to the end, You'll, you know, be ahead of 80% of the people who start this. But more importantly, by doing that, now you can set yourself up for the next time and the next time to get better and better and better at this. Once again, we're not looking for protection or perfection. If you stay with it, you'll benefit even if you don't come close to reaching your goals or tactics. Next time, you'll be even better until you eventually master this. And then once again, just like the business system, you pass this down to your generations. It's going to be a lot easier for you to build that distribution, get to a point where you have the cash flow asset you can walk away from. I posted this in the Facebook group. If you do not have an Audible account, you can sign up for it. And I've got a link where um, I invited you for a free audio book and get the 12-week year. Um, I'll make a comment or something in the Facebook group on that post so it goes back to the top. Um, but right now, if you don't have the book, you should be getting the book, getting the audio, getting through that so that, you know, closer to the end of the year, we we'll have a couple prep classes, and then we start January the 7th. Once again, power through it. You know, you've got everything in life. If everything was real easy, everybody would do it. There's a reason why high earners, high builders, um, successful people are separated from the crowd. They put the work, they put the effort into it, and uh, they saw it through. A lot of people, the easiest thing to do in life is quit. That is the absolute easiest thing to do. Most everybody does quit. Uh, just power through it. You're going to have coaches, and we're going to start leaning on people that have started or that have been through this before, and we're going to start using them as coaches to help the new people, um, you know, get into a position where they understand what they're doing, understand how to do the tactics, the goals, and really that's it. You're keeping track every day. You're seeing how that activity is fueling um, or is a catalyst for the goals. And if you're starting to reach those, you're not reaching the goals, we'll kind of go back to the drawing board. But what you'll find out is as you start to reach those tactic goals, the other goals should fall in line. We're going to go through some of this in the prep class. If you're brand new, you should not have income goals as one of your goals. You should have activity goals because those are leading indicators that the income will come in. So actually, you know, make goals that you specifically can have total control over. You know, how many of this, how many of that build out of your social media platforms, whatever it might be. Once again, we'll have some prep classes to help you guys, um, you know, make this a successful 12-week year. And the point multiplier. So there is a change in the way the platform is recognizing the points. The way that it used to be is if you wrote up 
uh, an insurance policy retirement plan, 40% of that is advanced on the submission. 60% is paid to you on the issue and approval. Nothing's, remain, nothing's changing with that, but the way they used to recognize the points is 100% of the points coming in on the initial submission. Well, now they're going to recognize it just as earned, so 40%, 60%, which makes a lot of sense, but you guys have an opportunity to take advantage because to make the transition a little easier, January, all points are multiplied by 1.8, February, 1.35, and March, 1.2. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you're running a base shop, you can see the online base shop at 14,000 points times 1.8, 25,000. It's going to get you up to a bonus. If you are working on uh, the quarterly base shop, you know, you can see how those are broken down, January, February, March. Q1 is an enormous time to take advantage of a lot of things. Uh, if you're working on senior vice president, working on base shop bonus pools, quarterly base shop uh, bonus, whatever it might be. This is a real opportunity for you to go out there and make things happen. And don't forget, the three-month promotion run, that 90-day cycle or rolling three months, same here. So if you're working on this, you're a VP building an organization, you should definitely take advantage of this point multiplier. And all of a sudden, you know, it becomes very easy to get things accomplished in Q1. There's no reason why Q1 2019 shouldn't be your best quarter if you've been around for a while or if you're new gives you that explosive head start that you need to really start working on the things that are important, fostering business relationships, um, you know, making the bonuses, getting to a point where you start to build the distribution. And then also the basketball tournament. We do this every year, um, you know, and you've got every tournament that we ever run, every contest that we ever run will always be geared around making sure it's all-inclusive, meaning that if somebody was just brand new on the day of that start, they can still compete. So it's not about team growth. It's not about anything else other than three things. Direct partner hire. They get through the entire interview process. It makes a good fit. Two points for that. If you accept the standard track exchange, it's one point. Fast track exchange is a three-pointer. So once again, it just takes the monotony out of the everyday processes and make it a little bit more fun. That starts January 7th. Um, corresponds or coincides with the start of our 12-week year and run through April 7th. So you've got a little time, and that should be fun um, to watch it build up, watch people compete with each other. Last year, Sean was our 2018 tournament champion, so he'll be the defending champ. And so we'll try to uh, take Sean down, and Sean will try to, you know, uh, you know, repeat. Let's look at the speed and the magnitude of changes that are happening around us. Because when you start to understand this and grasp the environment that we're in, it puts you into a different mindset. Um, you know, you don't want to look at this in a traditional mindset where it's going to take you X amount of time to have X. Um, what you want to look at this as is that we've got a digital model. We've got all this infrastructure. You have really no point of resistance for scalability other than finding talented people to hire and bring in and put to work. But you can see how quickly these things sped up through the last few years uh, down to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. 50 million users. We're going to have a lot of people in this company. It's still early, guys. You still have the chance to really stake your claim here and build huge um, downlines that will spread out all across the country that will pay you extremely well. Let's look at some of the digital disruptors because it's not always – innovation disruption doesn't always equal profit. This is one of the most profitable industries around, one of the largest industries around. When you overhaul it, it's going to be a lot of money on the move. But Facebook right here, you know, they made $4 billion. Netflix, they made $559 million. Uh, Airbnb, they made $100 million. So all those properties worldwide raked in $100 million. Pandora, they lost half a billion dollars. Google. Uh, you know, Google the juggernaut made over twelve and a half billion dollars. Uber, you know, they're getting ready to go public. They lost four and a half billion dollars last year. Society One, which is an online bank, their break even will be when they have five hundred million in loans. And then Amazon made three billion. But to put this into perspective, platform paid out basically a billion dollars last year, estimated payout four billion in twenty twenty. Our digital piece of that should be pretty good. So you have the opportunity to take innovation disruption, and already a profitable scenario and basically give it steroids and put it on a hyper path to get you where you want, your business partners where you want, 
um, which is a, a win-win for everybody that's involved. I'm not going to go through this entire thing. You guys can read it. But the point of this is that the number of enforced life insurance policies has been on the decline over the past decade. So why is it where we have all this information that we can get, you know, basically uh, at the keystroke, everything's flying around, um, everybody's got an opinion, politics, religion, all of these things. So why is it that a financial product like life insurance has been on the steady decline? Well, in my opinion, the distribution of financial services and insurance is a broken model. The way that a lot of these companies do business, very archaic, very 1960s, 70s, 80s, um, and we are bringing something into the spotlight that will allow us to reach a lot of people, do a lot of good, get people insured. Do people need life insurance? Yes. Do people need life insurance for living benefits? Yeah, if they can qualify, it's part of our crusade. So you've got to be comfortable with opening up conversations. No one jumps up in the morning excited to buy life insurance. No one jumps up in the morning excited to really go out and, and review retirement. But if they don't do that, if you're not pushing them to do that, um, then what people normally do is they drift. And when people drift, whether it's in a business and they quit or whether it's just in finances and retirement planning, all of a sudden you turn around. You're 65, 66, 67 years of age, and basically you're counting on Social Security. For the uh, generation that's approaching Social Security age, that's one thing. For the younger generation, you know, you should not be counting on Social Security. So we have an opportunity to create a new distribution model that takes care of, you know, things on our side, money, freedom, big businesses, but also shores this up and gets us, you know, as a company, as a platform to really go out there and distribute on a massive scale financial services. Remember, innovation does not have to be a product. It's a process. So we're just taking an old way of doing business that was very stale and stagnant, creating a new way of doing business. And innovation is the key that unlocks new value. That new value streams straight down to your pocketbooks or your wallets um, if you do this correctly. Does the innovation work? Will the marketplace accept it? Well, over the last few years, we've tested this. Innovation does work, the marketplace does accept it, and we're getting to that inflection point where we should see a lot of growth over the next 48, 60 months. This is the prime time to come in, get serious about this, put in some work, and really let that work have time to compound to give you what you're looking for. It's shocking how many people sometimes during the interview process say, yeah, I'm going to give this five years, and then five weeks later, starting to get frustrated when they came in with no social media accounts, um, you know, it, it takes a little while to get this going. If, like we talked about, one of the easiest things to do in life is to quit. If you say five years, and you quit after five weeks. Well, like we talked about last week, you know, that making promises to yourself and keeping those promises builds self-confidence. That leads to a lot of advantages for you personally and business-wise. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you get in the constant habit of making promises to yourself, Breaking those promises becomes much easier because the brain loves habit to, you know, go out every time and break promises to yourself. So to find the business problem, what was our business problem? Well, we talk about the distribution of financial services. The agency building model was something that really comes from the 1950s. So we saw a problem. We created a solution, put a business plan into effect, tested that business plan, came back, kind of tweaked things that needed to be tweaked to the point that we have a well-oiled machine here, company that's ready to go, um, just missing people in the right places, um, you know, leaders. That's all that we need. The point of resistance for scalability for you is finding talented leaders to come in, people that can take over large groups of people and help those people get to in their individual goals and dreams because what that does for the other person as well as us is gets us to our goals and dreams as well. Virtual financial, you guys, you know, all the time, you know, I, I get a lot of people say, well, what's your affiliation with WFG? I'll skirt around it. WFG provides our platform, all the administration, contracting, commission, compliance. We've talked about this before. You can't just have a digital model, expect hyper-exponential hyper growth, and not have a back-end infrastructure to absorb that. It's very important. WFG plays an important piece, but WFG has a different model than us. So there's a lot of people they bring in, hire. Uh, there's no continuity or cohesiveness to the way they do business. You could have two offices 20 miles apart. They do business completely different. So 
with their business model, you got some people that have a negative opinion of WFG. They provide our back-end infrastructure. We're happy to be a partner with them. We're also happy to be a partner with Wealthwave as, all, as well. These are strategic partnerships that allow us to come in, build this business for basically zero out of pocket, and have the opportunity to turn over, you know, a, um, an enormous amount of passive income. You should be growing. If your business, especially when you don't need additional capital, you don't need additional infrastructure, you should be growing. If your business is contracting, you need to come back and reevaluate things. What's happening? Why is this going on? Correct things from your side. Correct things in the process that you've been doing. You should always be growing with this business model. And remember, great companies always grow. You know, if you're, if you're done growing, you start contracting, well, there's not going to be there's going to be a point of inflection where the competition runs you over. So, yes, we hire. When people ask, you know, you know, what are we looking for? Well, we hire just like any other company in America. There's a talent shortage out there. We are looking for talent. The only difference is I'm not looking to pay somebody X per hour, X per year to sit around and do one of those normal W-2 or salary tasks. What we're looking for is people that are willing to tie their income 100% to the revenue growth of this company an amazing opportunity for those that understand it. If they don't understand it, it's okay. Move on. It's not your job to bring a lot of people in this business. It's your job to bring the right people into this business. They also invest. You know, if you come in here and you don't have funds to invest in your business, that's fine. You can start to grow your business. We've got a lot of free tools that you can use. But as you start to make money in this business, invest back into your marketing. Invest back into, you know, building the business even bigger. Um, it doesn't take a lot these days out of pocket to be able to do some amazing things uh, in this digital environment. And then finally, advertise. If you are advertising constantly on the client side, on the product side, you're going to have people that are interested in opening conversations on both sides. If you're doing no advertising, well, how in the world do people know that you're actually in business? So it's important that people you know, know that, hey, this person does this. If you're just hiding over in a dark corner, expecting people to come find you, um, that's not going to work out too well. So all great companies hire, invest, and advertise to grow. What's your investment? Well, at first, it's very little. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a decent night out for dinner and drinks, you know, $159, $189. Your main investment in the beginning is going to be sweat equity. And that's, you know, with any business from the ground floor as an entrepreneur, a lot of sweat equity goes into that. The good thing about our business is, you don't have a date the next 45, 60, 75, 90 days where you have to have a product or more investment or you're shutting down like a lot of the other tech companies. Sweat equity is required, um, but it's not required forever. You start to build this. You start to take over other roles. Then before you know it, you've got marketers. You've got consultants. And if you're leading them, managing them, um, people are going to find success. Remember, the visual for what we're doing, you have the insurance industry, one of the largest uh, industries in the world. Now, what we're doing is we're overhauling that with a digital model that allows exponential reach, none of the uh, cost associated with, with the traditional model in terms of fixed or variable cost, and that allows us to take money and take share from the traditional marketplace and funnel that back to uh, VF. Industry, overhaul, funneling it back to VF. That's the um, visual that you want to keep in your head. That's all we're doing. It's an agency building model, um, been around for a long time. It's a digital overhaul. We will extract market share and um, revenue and income from this industry on a big scale. You know, Wealthwave combined with us, guys, they've got great videos. They've got, you know, the, the Wealthwave system is awesome. Uh, one of the things that they have is they'll be feeding you blog entries every day. I mean, all the stuff that we normally talk about to give you activity online, they're going to help you out with. So the combination or the merge of virtual financial and wealth wave is going to be something that's going to be also very explosive. If you use this correctly, it's going to shore up a lot of the things that maybe a lot of people that I see are struggling with, just the activity, the content of pushing it out. Now you've got it all at your fingertips. And remember, this is not really a question of anything other than competition. This is a competition between you and a traditional marketplace. You feel you're right. You feel you're the future of the industry. You know, market share, income, revenue is simply transferred from the old model 
to the new model. So we're taking on a huge industry where big companies have dominated with a stale model for decades. Digital environment has paved the way for entrepreneurs like us to take the market share. Money transfer from traditional to digital and from the producer to the entrepreneur. This is basically what it looks like. Disruptor changes in environment or space, so it's never the same again. You have that traditional model right there. Money starts to leave, and it starts to flow to the digital model. I just want you guys to make sure that when you look at the business model, look at the opportunity that you have visuals in your mind of exactly what's happening. A lot of money is going to be on the move. Time for you to come in and stake your claim. Another thing that you have to work on, and this is something that's very important, one of the things that's important about the learning curve is can you hold an intelligent and influential conversation about virtual financial? Now, in the beginning, you don't need to. Got the tier one script that's very, you know, short, to the point, trying to get people to watch videos so that the interested parties, somebody else will help you with. But if you're going to attract top talent after a little while, you need to know how to talk to top talent Hold a conversation that gets you into a position where you have influence over those people. Top talent is where it's at. You can hire 10 people. You can hire three people per month. If the 10 people are not what you're looking for, but two of the three of those people are top talent all-stars, you're going to grow a much bigger, faster organization because you want people to stick. It's, you don't get paid anything to bring people in this business. So remember that. Bring the ones in that fit. Don't just bring people in to bring in a number. And some of the things that you need to know with your conversations is the environment's changed. Digital disruption is affecting all aspects of our life. Those changes create opportunities and the transformations um, that are happening, you know, once again, create lots of opportunities for us. Also on the distribution side, you know, product sales, um, books of business, this is all old school mentality. You want to build distribution in a virtual environment in an industry this size with the infrastructure already in place. And find the product and service. Product innovations going on, e-apps, nationwide reach. In this self-directed environment, people are making huge mistakes based on emotion, are based on financial, um, are not being financial literate. And we come in, no cost, no obligation, talk to people, steer them in the right direction. And by doing that, it leads to a product sale in many cases. Remember, also, when you're talking to people, a practice means heavy-handed day-to-day activity. You can't leave a practice. A practice is basically self-employed. Um, it's kind of like the W-2 employee. The only difference is you're making more, you have more expenses, more responsibility, and probably more debt. So if somebody's looking to build a practice, that's fine. Best of luck to you going forward. Um, if somebody's actually looking to build a business, that's where we want to talk to people. Build your business, build your assets. That's what we're looking for in a mentality for the people that we go out and headhunt. And we've talked about this before. This is mainly for uh, you guys if you're new. This is some language and verbiage that also helps you with conversations. So when you look at this, how likely is it that you will receive my contract and my compensation? Very likely. How likely is it that you receive Mike and Chris's contract and compensation? Very likely. How likely is it that you receive Bill Mitchell's contract and compensation? Uh, very likely. If you work this business correctly, this is not a corporate structure. This is a free-flowing platform that rewards hard work, organization, and time invested. And then how likely is it that you can go to a company anywhere right now, interview them, and on the interview start talking about how do I reach the CEO's contract and compensation? They'll laugh you out of the interview room. This is a legit even field kind of path to get you where you want to go. My contract and compensation is the same as Bill, same as Mike, same as Chris's. Uh, really level playing field here, guys. Also, um, what does that mean for us and our company? Well, it stops turnover. Now, I'm not talking about the people that come in and don't do anything and quit in a few weeks. You're going to have that. We try to filter those people out early, but you're going to have that. I'm talking about when they actually get to senior vice president with a running base shop, building distribution, those are the people that we will keep for long periods of time. They don't have to leave. They're not working for anybody. They don't have a lot of expenses. They don't have offices to run. They're fostering business relationships, working for themselves, and they're happy. Tons of places to go for personal production. This is also very important, guys. When you talk about contract levels, if somebody wants to be a personal producer, you can go get high contract levels anywhere you want to go. 
if that was the end-all solution to the turnover in this industry, companies with the highest contract levels would keep everybody. They have just as much turnover, if not more. It's about putting somebody into a place where they can be successful, reach their goals and dreams. So on personal production, if you want to go out and you want to sell insurance, no exit strategy, that's fine. If you want an exit strategy in actual business, there's a difference. Do you want a high contract level or do you want to make more money? How do you keep someone who's top talent? Well, you, you allow them to make money, an unlimited opportunity. You allow them to build and foster relationships, and you lock in people through ownership. Ownership in this platform, uh, that ID number that you get is an agency ID number. It's with you for you know long periods of time. It's, you can sell it. Uh, you can will it down. This is ownership. This is what smart, savvy, successful, talented people are looking for. Ownership, cash flow, passive income. And also, when you're talking to people, to hold that conversation and to hold your own in that conversation, we're extremely diversified, not only in our products, but also in our roles. You have business development, lead generation. You have sphere influence, referral partners. You have producers, consultants, recruiters, marketers, sales team leaders, and managers. A lot of different roles that somebody can fit into, not be forced into those other roles, but also, very important, they can grow with their business. They're not boxed in. No one's saying you can't do this down the road. This platform encourages development and growth as part of the business plan. Evolution of a, financial, a virtual financial business partner. You're going to walk with them for a while, hold their hand, coach and mentor them, then eventually you've done all that. You set them on their own. They've got their own base shop. They're starting to build their own distribution. You get, you get paid nicely for that upfront investment. So like we were just talking about, you know, they're going to be very dependent on you, like a baby. You're going to have to, you know, basically hold their hand. And they're going to start to pick up some things and say, you know, I don't need you for this, this, or this anymore. At that point, you start to coach and mentor them to the point they become independent of you. Just like if you raise a successful child that goes out and leaves your home and is a productive member of society, feel like you've done your job. Here's the same thing. If you create independent agency owners that can go out, Take what you've done for them, duplicate it outside of your realm. It's going to give you everything that you're looking for. All pushing this together. Your teammates are assets for you. Make sure you, you, know, you let them know, hey, I'm appreciative of your hard work. I understand what you're going through. Um, you know, this is a period of time that I experienced. So you've got to let them know that what they're going through, not atypical, not abnormal. We're all pushing it together to make sure that this puzzle comes together, gets everybody what they're looking for. All of this is meaningless unless you provide the organization and effort from your side. You can't want this more than your business partner wants it. And that's a frame of thought and a mindset that you've got to get out of. You can't pull somebody through this process. They've got to have activity. And that comes from the tier six. That comes from the strategy calls that we have, the LinkedIn help resumes or whatever marketing we're doing, email templates, communication schedule, ongoing support. It's all laid out there for you. If you're unwilling to pick up the phone, unwilling to email, unwilling to make connections online. Um, it's, there's nothing that we can do from our side that's going to help you. And then remember, we talk about this quite often. You know, when we're talking about having that, you know, holding that conversation about virtual financial, you also want to increase your skills as a recruiter or a headhunter. This is what you need to master right here. Build the rapport. That leads to you having trust and credibility that will lead your prospects to divulging information that will lead to either problems or goals they have where you can offer a solution, and that solution reverts back to an action point, which could be product sales side, potential business partner interviews. Once you reverse engineer and dissect it all backwards, all components of this equal mastery. If you can get through this pyramid, learn how to master it, you're going to find your conversations become a lot um, better in terms of the pipeline flow, uh, people answering your call, people wanting to talk to you. And remember, the Tier 1, guys, we created the Tier 1 to dictate the schedule and the communication, the takeaway, to make sure that people don't waste your time. You don't want to be on the phone with somebody 15, 20 minutes if they've never watched the videos. That video or those videos actually give us something to talk about, and it ensures that the other side is at least willing to invest a half hour into continuing this conversation. 
And this is exactly what we're talking about. On the front side, you've got somebody who didn't follow the schedule here, and they're just wasting time talking to people. And through five upfront tier one contacts, they've spent 71 minutes versus someone who's following the system, the schedule, and has spent 10 minutes. This really adds up over time to work for you or against you. If you make sure that you get into a position where you make people watch the videos and tell them, hey, those are prerequisite videos. In order for us to talk and have something to talk about, I need you to watch those. They're a half hour in length. If they're unwilling to do that, you're pretty much unwilling to talk to them further about this business. What do you need to do for yourself and your partners? Well, be accountable. Be accountable to yourself. Be accountable to your partners. Do it, understand it, use it. Hire up. Don't prejudge people because of their success. That's important. A lot of people shy away. I don't think this person would be interested. How do you know? And the CRM, you know, that's the brains of our operation. That's the glue that holds it all together. You need to understand how that works. The tracks. You need to understand how to talk about the virtual financial tracks. Keep it simple. Um, don't make it hard to understand and make people understand the reasons for doing it, the advantages that they're going to see both now and in the future. Know when to cut loose of uh, potential prospects, potential clients, or actually people that have come into your organization that are wasting your time. We're so far ahead of the industry right now. It's really time to capitalize. Q1 is a great quarter for you guys. I hope you take advantage of it. And remember, be accountable. Accountability is going to separate the wishers from the action takers, and that shows up, you know, in revenue, income, partner growth. If you are submitting, 9 p.m. Eastern every Sunday is when the numbers are due. And this is basically what we keep up with. Might be changed in the near future. You keep track of what you do, and we know what that gets in terms of results. It's a lot easier to tweak it versus you having no idea what you're doing. Um, that's only going to get blanketed advice from our side. So keep track of what you're doing. It's easier for you to improve and easier for you to scale, and easier for you to teach your business partners how to scale as well. Make goals. This is important. And, you know, the vision is the goals. That's going to provide the motivation that provides the execution on the backside. If you have no goals, if you don't know what you want, it's a lot easier to drift. So when you have goals, you have that vision, what do you want? Now you also streamline those down into actionable goals, Marketing plan, connection, calls, follow-ups, partners, advancements, money. If you know what you want, it's a lot easier to go out and, and get there. Potential partners. We basically sell them an opportunity or hope an opportunity on this platform where we've talked about this before. It doesn't matter your age, your race, your sex. None of that matters. It matters how can you come in here, work hard, put this together, and lead other people. It starts with knowing what, when, how, and why. You've got to know all these stuff. You've got to review your goals every day. Um, you've got to feel those goals. If you want to move somewhere to a new house, if you want to buy a new car, whatever this is, don't just think about it. Feel it with emotion. Lead yourself there. And how to create a daily routine. This is important. If you go into any day unsure of what you're going to do, the day is already a failure. So map it out. You know, if you going to create a couple of memes, post a couple articles. It should be very short in time. Map out some time to be on the phone. Get everything to a point where you have a list that you're checking off. I did that, did that, did that, didn't do that. If you're sitting there looking at something and you've got a lot of check marks and a few things that aren't checked off, it's easier to complete the entire list of tasks versus just kind of, once again, drifting through the day. All of a sudden it's 12, 2, 4 p.m. What have I done today? Well, I know I was on Facebook for an hour and a half. This will get you off the habits that the brain likes. You know, you get stuck on social media. You get stuck reading stuff online. Um, create daily routines. Stick to those routines. It helps you out. And the checklist is very simple. You want to, you know, know what you need to do, write it down, actually do it, keep track so you know, make mistakes and learn. A lot of people are afraid to make mistakes. You've got to make mistakes. That's the only way you're going to improve, find success, is through that initial period of time making those mistakes. And then don't forget, you know, I, I hate to compare this to gambling, but when you look at this, you got two people. you got a guy just staring at the slot machine versus a guy who's actively playing. Who has a better chance at hitting the jackpot? Well, it's the person that's active. And if you take it out of gambling, I'm talking about active daily routines of activity. You can't get lucky. If you don't show up, 
Rhythm of activity over X period of time is how you're going to find success. That starts with showing up every single day. Um, this was an older slide. It says run the summer, don't let the summer run you. But it goes in, you know, for all periods of time. We're in the winter time right now. It's snowing here. We're snowed in. No matter what goes on, you're not feeling well, your kid's not feeling well, weather crappy, show up every single day. And then I talked about this a few minutes ago. Get rid of people. Don't baby people. The last thing you want is somebody who's not self-confident, always needs to talk to you, um, not really doing the activity, but wants to talk about every little thing that's going on. And normally that's negative things that are happening in their life. You become like a sounding board or a psychiatrist that has to listen to all this. Get rid of them early. If they happen to slip in your organization, they're not going to do what you need them to. Cut loose. Saying goodbye. You know, you don't have to be mean to say goodbye. Take care. Thanks. Best of luck. Uh, have a good week. These are all positive things that you can say. Best regards. I appreciate the connection. You know, don't leave people. This is a brand that we're trying to protect. You don't need to argue with people. You don't need to talk down to people. You don't need to yell at people. Uh, you just need to move on. And then don't forget, one training sale is all that we require. No builder's exchange legs. No co-leadership legs. Nothing compared to the other models. The difference is that upfront sale is rewarded with a new partner um, with phase one on standard or fast track if it meets certain requirements. You know, I was a broker, and for the first three months, 90 days, all I did was open accounts for the senior brokers in the office. So somebody who's not willing to go through one training sale exchange for all the time, energy, effort that we put into them, I can't help that. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. If you want to stay on the company track, that's fine. Um, I'm trying to get you to a point where you get to what I want you to get to, senior vice president, running a base shop, building the distribution as quickly as possible. That starts with one training sales, not that big of a requirement. And remember, we are trying to fix a big problem in the industry because if you talk to producers out there, they're always looking for the next best lead source. Well, our cold marketing and our social media marketing, it fuels warm market lead generation. So when your organization gets big enough, you're going to have consultants in there talking to people that are referred over that are friends, family members, neighbors, coworkers that need help with finances, uh, saw a video about living benefits, whatever it might be, and then all of a sudden the easiest closes and the easiest sales to make come from people that have been referred over to you by people that you already know. Some say yes, some say no. It doesn't really matter. The, the overall impact of doing this on a daily basis is you get better at what you're doing, which starts to attract better talent, which gets you the yes answers that you're looking for. Now, I'm not talking about in the beginning, yes, that you're coming to the organization or you're becoming a client. I'm talking about, yes, I will watch the video or the videos. Yes, I will be there tomorrow when you follow up with me. If you get confident on the phone, um, it's going to come out. You're going to start directing people. You're going to start to fall in line. Don't get caught up on the nose um, because all of a sudden that's a vicious cycle that you fall into. Also, these are some things that you should be concentrated on. Three solid direct partners per month. Not bringing people in to say I brought somebody in, but three solid direct partners uh, that are direct to you. And as you build out your base shop, a growth of 10 in the base shop. If you can start to hit these numbers, uh, things will start to move very quickly for you. And listen, you know, calling is not optional here. It's not an optional skill. You can't hide behind the keyboard. If you do not do it or do not do it effectively, it's going to cause issues. Most people resist. People hate rejection, causes call reluctance, and that feeds on top of itself. We talk about this all the time. You haven't picked up the phone in two weeks, feels like 500 pounds. You pick up the phone every day, you're not even thinking about it. You're just picking up, making the calls that you need, sorting the people into the slots that you need to, finding what you're looking for. If you're working the cold market, really uh, tips to work the cold market, it's all about your mindset. You must stop selling, start interviewing people. When you start to show interest in other people, they open up to you. It goes back to the period of uh, the pyramid of mastery for recruiting or headhunting. Utilize a tool other than yourself to present your business. Hey, you know, we've got tons of videos there for you. It takes about 90 days to fill up your pipeline. Crush the phone, stay consistent. 
really first three months in here, you're really building the pipeline. Yes, you should have some results that come out of that, but if you do the first 90 days effectively, do what we ask, things are going to start to trickle in. You need a solid follow-up system. Um, we've got a communication schedule. We've got text, emails that you can follow. Think long-term, numbers game. Connect with them on platforms to show them that you're a real person, you have interest, and that goes back to what we always talk about. Don't post crap on social media that's going to infuriate half the population. doesn't matter. No, I don't care about your political opinion, your religious opinion. Um, I use these social media platforms for business and business only. I have a Facebook personal page. I'm going to post some stuff that's funny. But overall, I'm on these social media platforms to connect, um, network, and build my business. And you've got to smile when you're on the phone. Uh, people do business with people they like. If you're having a bad day, take a minute, step back, kind of readjust yourself, get back on the phone. We talk about this all the time. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here other than the fact that if you are in sales or if you're a builder, it doesn't matter. What separates the high earners and the big builders from the low earners and the small builders is follow-up. Follow-up will make or break your business. If you're not willing to follow up or you're going to follow up once or twice, probably not going to find the success that other people will have that understand these statistics, understand where other people quit, and understand what they need to do to rise above the crowd and build something that few will have the um, know-how and the resilience to build. Relationships. Very, very important. You're a brand. We talk about virtual financial, yes, is a brand, but you are also a brand. What do you do? What do you like? Um, you know, put stuff out there that's interesting about the business, about the macro environment, whether it's economics, um, you know, whatever you want to talk about. Be interesting. Have people gravitate back towards you. And then LinkedIn. We talk about LinkedIn a lot. Um, one thing I did want to bring up today is we always talk about how to search for new people. You know, that top search bar, marketer, insurance agent, second connection. We go through that stuff all the time. Another great way to use LinkedIn is to group your first connection. So if I go to that top toolbar and I put in real estate agent, CPA, and I bring up my first connections, it's going to give all my first connections who are agents, who are CPAs. And if you have a specific message for that group of people, you just go right down the line and fire that message off. So we always talk about building, but make sure you're extracting value from your existing audience. Group people together, send targeted messages to those people about talking to you on the phone, about networking, about building relationships. Also, guys, I didn't – I gave you a break from the one slide on the size of the upgrade market, but this is a huge market. This is a super cycle. We got very, very lucky. Living benefits, all these things that are coming out that allow us with this digital model where we can go out and speak to so many people, there's tens of millions of those policies. Learn how to talk to people. Once again, life insurance is not exciting. But you know what's not exciting as well? Filing bankruptcy, uh, you know, having your house foreclosed on, having your spouse leave because of medical issues that cause a financial hole couldn't climb out of. Very important. Crusade for our client side. Make sure that you're talking to people about this. And also, you have to – Look at the news every day. What's going on right now? Well, there's a lot of market volatility going on right now. And if you look at the market, up 500, up 300, down 200, that volatility in a tight trading range like we have, usually what happens is like coiled spring. It's going to pop at some point, and the probability this market breaks to new highs versus breaks to new uh, breaks to some lows is um, – is very lopsided in my opinion. So if people are in their 50s, people are approaching retirement, uh, they're probably looking for answers. They need to sit down with somebody, got some great products that can possibly help them. And remember, if, you're, if the market's in a downturn right here and you've got people into products that have downside uh, protection, so even though the macro environment right here or the longer term trend is down, you're getting those dead count bounces in the middle where it really fuels the percentage gains for those particular periods of time. And then don't forget, if you want to be in the 1% of your state, you need to know what that is and use it as a target goal because that income calculator is a very easy way to figure out what do I need to do to build a base shop? What do I need to do to build my distribution? What do I need to do 
to get to this number, and you can back it out down to activity. In order to become that 1%, you're going to have to do what the other 99% won't do. It's very important. Once you separate yourself mentally uh, and then with activity, organization, all of these things that we talk about, um, you know, you're going to find a lifestyle that everybody wants if you are willing to work for. And get serious about the rest of this year. We only got a few weeks. Use it as a time to get what you need done to springboard into Q1, the chance to do something very special on a very large scale. If you've been in here for a while, um, you know, if you feel like things are starting to change, start, things are starting to speed up, you're exactly right. Don't be in a position where you're going to be potentially left behind. You've been here for a while. Dig in. This is the time to really get things done. If you're brand new, you've got a great opportunity for um, you know, growth because everything is laid out. We made some mistakes. We, run, we ran over or we encountered some roadblocks, obstacles. All that stuff has been taken care of. All you've got to do is come in, fit into a system, and then outside of that system, couple it with other things like the 12-week year, and you're really going to find what you're looking for. So I think we did pretty good on time today. I'm going to turn it back over to Lana. If you guys have any public comments, fine. If you need help on a private scale, uh, we're definitely there to help you as well. Another great training by Mike Amos. Thank you so much. Um, I got a lot out of it. I hope you did too. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and then we'll open up the floor.